chica. All right, in this video, we're going to look at solving a system of equations, and we're going to focus on the addition method this time. Uh, there's other videos out there for the comparison method and the substitution method. So when we're solving a system of equations, we're trying to find the values of our variables that satisfy both equations. So we'll have the values of x and y that work in our first one, and those same values of x and y also work in our second equation. Now, for the sake of this course, we're only looking at linear equations, and we're only going to look at two different equations. Uh, you can look with nonlinear equations. You can also look with more than two equations, but that's outside of the scope of grade 10 math. So we're not going to worry about those for now. When we have two linear equations, we have three different possible outcomes. Uh, most of the time, we've got situation A, where there's only one pairing of the variables that satisfy both equations. That means we have two lines, and they cross at one point, and we're trying to find out that point. Uh, that's going to be uh, the focus of what we're going to be doing, uh, certainly in this video and throughout um, most of grade 10 math. There are two other possibilities. We could have two lines that are parallel, and that means that they would never cross, and um, that also means that there'd be no pairings of the variables that would work in both equations. And then we could also have two lines that are essentially the same line, just written differently. And uh, in that case, it probably makes sense. We'd have an infinite number of solutions. Any of the values that worked in the first equation would also work in the second one, because essentially they're the same. So we don't really focus on B and C too much, because they're kind of special cases. So we're going to be looking at A, where we're trying to find the one value of x and y, or the one value of two variables, that will work in both equations. So let's look at an example. So we have first equation is 5x plus 2y equals 5. Our second equation is negative 4x minus 3y equals 3. And we're trying to find the one pairing of x and y that will work in both of these equations. The first thing we need to do is decide on which variable or letter to eliminate. Uh, it doesn't matter. You could eliminate x in this case. You could eliminate y. As you practice it, you'll find that there'll be some cases where it might be easier to uh, eliminate, and eliminate one over the other because it may mean slightly fewer steps. But we're not going to worry about that for now. I'm going to look at eliminating x in this, uh, in this example. So what I need to do then is I need to find what the lowest number that both coefficients will divide evenly into. The coefficients are just the numbers in front of our x. So 5 is the coefficient here, and negative 4 is the coefficient here. And for the arguments of this, I'm not going to worry so much about the negative. Just focus on the 5 and the 4. So what is a number that both 5 and 4 can divide evenly into? And our lowest one in this case is 20. So essentially, I'd have 20x and 20x. So now I'm going to multiply 1 or both of my equations by an integer, so it's just a, a positive or negative whole number, so that the selected variable will be canceled out when the equations are added together. All right, so I want to add together these two equations, but I want to cancel out my x's. So that means I'm going to have 20 positive x's in, in one of my equations, and then 20 negative x's in my other one. That one, when I add them together, my x's cancel out, and I'm only left with y's. And uh, in this case, it's going to involve multiplying both of my equations by various integers. Sometimes you can get away with only multiplying one of them, and uh, certainly that'd be preferable. In this case, we, uh, we need to multiply both. And again, it's going to require that we have one with positive 20 and one with negative 20. I, I'm going to put the negative on the bottom in this case. So all right, the question is, what number do I need to multiply this equation here by so I can have 20x? Well, I just said, what do I multiply 5 by to get to 20? Well, I'm going to multiply by 4. And now, it's important to note that I have to multiply the 4 by every piece on both sides of this equation. I can't stress that enough. It's really important that you multiply by both pieces. So 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times positive 2 is plus 8. So this becomes plus 8y. And then yeah, equals 4 times 5 is 20 again. So now this equation here and this equation here are exactly the same. Uh, if I were to graph them, they'd be identical lines. 
just different numbers. Essentially, this one up here is reduced, and this one's not. All right, let's go to my second equation. All right, now what do I need to multiply negative 4 by to get to negative 20? Well, in this case, it's going to be 5, positive 5. And so I need to multiply every piece by positive 5. So negative 4 times 5 is negative 20, so this becomes negative 20x. Positive times a negative is a negative. 5 times 3 is 15, so this becomes 15y. And 3 times 5 is 15. So I've multiplied both sides by, uh, by my uh, integer, 5 in this case, 4 for the first one. So my next step is to add together the equations, and that will cancel out uh, the x in this case. I'm going to add them together. So 20x minus 20x, or plus negative 20x, is 0. They cancel out. E minus 15, well, that gives me negative 7y. And I add these together. 20 and 15 gives me 35. And my next step. I'm going to solve for the remaining variable. So what we notice is now, up here I have both x and y. My x is canceled out. I'm just left with y. I need to do algebra to solve for y. In this case, it means dividing by negative 7. Remember, this is negative 7 times y. To get rid of the negative 7, I have to divide by it. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other side. Cancels out. y here equals, well, positive divided by negative is a negative. 35 divided by 7 is 5. So y is negative 5. Now, I'm not going to stop there, but um, if you've looked at other methods, uh, like the comparison method, substitution method, once you've found the first variable, the other steps are identical. But we'll finish this one up. So I'm going to replace the value of, uh, of y into one of my original equations and then solve for my second variable. So in this case, I know y. I'm going to solve for x. So I'm going to go to the equation up here. Put that over here. And I've got 5x plus 2y. But rather than writing y, I'm going to write a negative 5 equals 5. Now, it's important that I use the original equation here and, and not the ones I did down here. That way, when I do my check, which I'll do in a second, if I made a mistake with these equations, uh, that wouldn't show up. So if I go back to my original ones, um, it's going to be my best way of making sure I haven't made any errors. So I'm going to multiply this out. So I've got 5x plus 2 times negative 5 gives me negative 10 equals 5. I'm going to bring my 10 to the other side or add 10 to both sides. So 5x equals 15. And then we divide by 5 over here and divide by 5 over here. This cancels out. And x equals 3. So if we've done this correct, these two lines should cross at the point 3, negative 5. Or when x is 3 and y is negative 5, the second equation should work as well. So I'm going to check that out. So that's our last step. It's a check using the other equation. And again, it's important that we check using equation different than the one that we used to find our second variable. That way, again, we're going back and checking all of our work. So I'm going to take my second equation, negative 4. Rather than putting an x out, I can put in our value of 3, minus 3. And again, rather than putting a y, I'll put in negative 5 equals 3. And if we've done this correct, this should work out. Well, negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. A negative times a negative is a positive. 3 times 5, so we have positive 15 equals 3. And negative 12 plus 15 equals 3. 3 equals 3. It works out. And there we go. That's it. Thanks for watching. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.